Whoops. Oh, that's heavy. It's like 300 pounds. I do not like these terminals. The threads are not perfect. This is a pretty slow process if you want to do it right. Do not use an impact gun on these. These terminals have lots of problems on the form, so be very careful. This one will not go. They look fine. There's nothing wrong with them visually. Now I see why these companies spot weld these cells. It is so much easier. Okay, I got it guys. That is not feeling good though. So a month ago, I didn't have any footage of it, but I destroyed the first BMS in this battery because I accidentally plugged in the wrong balance cables. Because they're the same plug, you'd never want to do this in a DIY kit. So I got a new BMS and then I hooked it up and then it didn't work, but it worked more than before. We actually had voltage on the main terminals, but the screen would not turn on and you won't believe what was causing it. It took me a few hours, but I found out that the cable that goes to the screen was defective on the first kit. So if your screen doesn't come on, it's because of this. So I swapped it out with the new one and it worked perfectly. But then I ran into another problem. I was getting an overcharge protection error, but all the cells were perfectly fine. And the reason why is the old BMS had the proper settings, but on this one, it didn't. So I had to guess the password on the JK BMS app and it was one, two, three, four. And then you need to slide over to this page, input one, two, three, four, five, six, and then you can change the advanced settings. So I said to lithium iron phosphate, and then it started working. It actually started charging, but it was limited. I could only charge with 10 amps. So I messed with the settings for even longer, and the continued charge current setting was set to 10. So I cranked this up to 120 amps. And now everything works, and we're doing a capacity test. Now this was my fault. This was their fault to so check your cable. I still don't know what happened here. It looks fine, but some of these pins don't look like they're in all the way. And then the new cable worked perfectly. So yeah, this thing was defective. So for the next few days, I tested the battery. We did multiple capacity tests, but keep in mind, this is a massive battery. So it took a lot of work. And for the first test, we got 324 amp hours, which is okay, but I noticed that the cell voltages were off. And at high state of charge, they were off by half a volt. That's a substantial amount. So I thought, hey, I need to balance this thing. We might be able to get more capacity. So I charged it up to 100%, but I noticed that the balance current was two amps. And I thought, that's crazy. This must be an active balancer. So I let the battery balance overnight and in the morning until it was completely done, until the cell voltages were within 0.001 volts of each other. And I thought, great, this is fantastic. Let's see what the capacity test results are now. So I did the exact same test at the same rate and I got 323 amp hours. I got less. So I thought, hey, maybe the BMS is limiting it. But on the app, the total capacity programmed is 330 amp hours. And the remaining capacity when I charge it up is 326. But we're getting 323 to 324. And I can't figure out why. I think it's just because this battery's massive and this shunt within its accuracy limit and out of those 16 cells, I think one just has 323 amp hours because I can't find a reason in the software. But it did pass the test. They were rated for 314. We pulled over 320. But I want to see like 330 or 326 like it says on the screen, but I couldn't get it. Now, active balancers, I'm not a big fan of. They're fantastic for the initial balancing. But after that, they're pretty useless. If your battery is using high quality match cells, you shouldn't need an active balancer. And even if you do have bad cells or a single bad cell, no amount of balancing is going to fix it. The total pack capacity of cells in series is dependent on the lowest capacity cell. Now, sometimes in the factory, they'll have some of the cells and they're not batched correctly. And some of them will be at a different state of charge. So let's say half of your cells are at 90% and the rest of the cells are at 100%. An active balancer will actually help in this instance. And it will take about a day or two and then all the cells will be balanced and then you will have full capacity. But then thereafter, there's not much benefit and there's a new fault point on your system. And with batteries, the BMS is the weakest link. Usually the cells don't go bad, the BMS does. So personally, I avoid active balancers in my systems. I don't think that it's worth the trouble. Now, the best way to know if you have an imbalance is not to look at the cell voltages. 
do a capacity test on your whole battery bank. If you pull full capacity, then let it be. It will balance on its own. Now, if you do have a severe imbalance and it's reducing the capacity of your battery, just charge that thing up to 100% or as close as you can, and then pop the top off the battery, charge up each individual cell to 100%, and then put the cover back on. It only takes a few hours and you'll have no risks of having an active balancer on your system. Some people like them. One use case I found is if you're in very cold climates and the batteries do not have enough sunshine to stay at 100% long enough to balance, then you will have an imbalance created slowly over time. And for these people, you can charge to 100%, balance it very quickly, and then it will be good for most of the winter. So you don't have to stay at 100% for very long. But again, you're creating a new fault point on your system. Now for the rest of the battery, I actually like it. I think the display was very simple and the build quality was fantastic. I like those flexible copper bus bars that they're using. What I did not like is the terminals. It was hard to screw them down and I felt like I was stripping something out every time. Now something I like about this battery is you can replace the BMS very easily, like the Ruxu battery. The Ruxu has a small cover on the side, you remove it and you can swap out the BMS. When I had to replace the BMS when I thought it was defective, it took a few minutes. It was very easy. Next, because of how the terminals are designed, the cables stick out the back. And this makes it very difficult to position this against the wall. So you'll have to special order some 90 degree lugs so they can stick out sideways, but then you won't be able to use their covers. So I think this is a bad design. A lot of companies like Ruxu and EG4 are using Amphenol connectors or quick connectors, and they're waterproof. These terminals are not waterproof and none of the battery is outdoor rated. So yeah, this is gonna be on competition with the cheaper EG4 indoor battery. And let's do a quick price comparison. So this battery should be under $2,000? That's insane, <laughs> what? I never checked that, I didn't know it was that cheap. What the heck? With this BMS, that's really nice. And the EG4 is $3,300 right now. Holy cow. And that has 14.3 kilowatt hours. This has 16 kilowatt hours. Man, the fact that we have this as an option at that price point, that's crazy. 16 kilowatt hours under $2,000? I thought this thing was more expensive, <laughs> holy cow. So I couldn't believe that, so I walked across the shop and looked at it. Something else they're using is a very expensive circuit breaker. That thing is like this big, it's huge, it's DC rated and it has a backup fuse. And they're using those really thick, nice bus bars. If they come out with an outdoor rated one with Amphenol connectors, we could hook it up to the outdoor hybrid systems. And that would probably be the cheapest system around. Now for the next step of my test, we're doing long-term testing. So I'm gonna hook it up to the bunker vault and cycle it with other batteries for a few months. But so far it passed all of my tests. I had a lot of hiccups because I destroyed the first BMS and we had the defective cable, but so far it's been doing very good. Now we're connected for long-term testing with my main workshop system. And we'll cycle it every day and see if we have any issues. Also, I noticed this is the same shade of gray as the Ruxu and the EG4. So they all blend together pretty well. Anyways, we'll come back in a few months and see if there's any issues. Now, one of my four members found an issue with this company. Some of their cells, which were the same exact ones as mine that I was complaining about the terminal, they had cracks on that terminal, which makes me want to check mine, that's scary. But the company says that the cracks are totally normal. I really don't know. I'm not a professional in aluminum and how it cracks. I know there's micro fractures in the aerospace industry with aluminum and they have to check for it, but I have no idea how this works. So let's take off the cover and see if mine has that. I have the newest cells. So maybe they fix this problem, I don't know. I don't see a single crack on any of these. And the welds look different than in the pictures posted on the forum. These welds are much thicker, but these ones are very small. So I don't think the new ones actually have this issue because I'm not seeing a single bad cell at all. Yeah, these look perfect. I don't see any cracks anywhere, but I still don't like these screw terminals, but this is the only way you can really do it with these types of cells to get this low price. If they welded the bus bars, then it would cost the same as all the others, I'm guessing. Having the cells shipped out separately saves a lot of money. You know, you could add your own terminals on top because the bus bars are right here. Just run some cables up to the top and then put a terminal on top of the battery if you want that. I like having it open like this. This is pretty cool. Now another month has gone by. So it's taken two months 
to make this video, but we are doing long-term testing and the battery is just working. I haven't had a single hiccup. And this system has 106 kilowatt hours and I cycle the entire capacity every single day. And the price of this thing is cheaper than a Rooksu. It doesn't have the UL listing. And I would say that has a slightly better build quality and it has quick connectors, but for the price, this thing is very hard to beat. Now this battery, you can buy the case and the BMS and the breaker separately, and then you can add your own cells. And if you find really cheap cells, you can make this battery even cheaper. But the big downside to this battery, in my opinion, is the cell terminals. Cause if you screw one of those up, you are having a bad day. That would be horrible. You're just gonna have to get another cell. You can't fix that. And when you put it together, you have to be very careful because it's up to you. You can't just blame the company if you put something together in a way that causes a problem, you'll be responsible. And if you know where to get these cells for even cheaper, let me know. That would be cool to have a second source. And that's pretty much it for this video. It took a long time to film. I had lots of hangups, but I got to test everything and I solved everything and now it's cycling every day. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.